Hi, I'm Dan Miller, Senior Editor with Progressive Farmer Magazine. Today we're going to talk about how to get new value out of an old barn like this one. To help us walk through the process, I'd like to introduce Bob Prozlaki, owner of Preservation Trades in Illinois. Bob, why would you want to recover a building like this? Well, Dan, I'll tell you that barns are uh, they are like uh, tools when a tool on the farm is no longer needed. It is kind of discarded, and uh, a barn is uh, basically the same thing. It's uh, abandoned, it's not utilized any further, and uh, it eventually rots down to the ground. Well, for the owners, there's some advantages in terms of tax liabilities and just insurance liability, right? That's right. Uh, we have two liability issues here that we're dealing with. One is the tax liability, property taxes, and of course, the building's removed, then we're going to have less property taxes. And the uh, physical liability of having a building uh, that's dangerous to uh, people who come to your farm and visit or just uh, your family, uh, you would want to have that building down. We're going to be working on two barns today. One, a uh, circa 1900 hog barn that's stick frame built, dimensional lumber. And then this 1850s dairy barn, it's built uh, post and beam style, timber frame, hand hewn timbers. Can we take a look? Sure. All right, let's go. Wow, this is really impressive. What do we have up here in the loft? Well, this is our barn frame. These are our timbers are situated into a post and beam structure. And uh, a timber frame barn is usually comprised of vents, and these are these cross sections running perpendicular to the ridge. And I'm showing you this because you have to understand how the barn is put together before you can take it apart. This looks like the kind of beam you're going to want to preserve. Bob, how do you get this out of here? Well, we have to be careful because we have a lot of weight bearing on top of it. This is a bent post. And what we have to do is start at the top, take the roof off, which was probably the last thing that was put on this barn, and work our way down, removing the smaller pieces, the queen posts up above. And then these whole sections can be just laid down and put on the deck here and then you could take it apart. We can put a, uh, we call a pin knocker made out of steel that will knock the pegs out. And once the pegs are out, then these pieces will come out and they'll be real loose because they're not held fast by the pin anymore. One of the stoutest beams in the barn and sought after is the tie beam. And that connects the two walls together, keeps the barn in tension, and it makes for a Real interesting architectural piece. Uh, people use them for structural in their house or for aesthetic purposes. Well, Bob, we're ready to start removing some wood. Where do you go first? Oh, well, we're going to remove the siding. And why do you want to do that? Well, by taking the siding off, it gives some natural illumination in the barn and helps you see what you're doing. What's the market for barn wood? Uh, it's a pretty good market. Uh, people use it for paneling inside their houses, for making furniture and flooring. It's uh, it's a good product. Now this is the tool you're going to use to take the siding off, right? That's correct. Why don't you tell me about it? It's made by our local blacksmith, and it's two pieces of steel, tube steel, welded to a leaf spring with a notch cut in it. Okay, we're going to have some detailed photos of this tool on our website. Well, first we'll look at some wood that we really don't want to keep. And I'm guessing this is a problem. Yes, it is, and it's caused by water migration through the timber, which has broken down the fibers in it as well as an opportunity has arisen for powder post beetles to come into the wood. This is a great beam here. It's old growth oak, isn't it? Yes, it is. And uh, that is the value in these timbers. You just can't get old growth wood like this anymore. And this uh, particular timber here is 8 by 14 inches by 22 feet, which is approximately 200 board feet. And uh, you could net probably $5 a board foot on something like this. So about $1,000 for this beam. That's correct, about $1,000. These pieces here are representative of what we've just seen in the loft. And uh, you notice they're hand hewn. We have a uh, cavity here, which is called a mortise. And this is the tenon. And uh, these two pieces fit into each other. And that's what makes up a timber frame structure. In hand hewing, that the owner would literally cut this, these beams with this axe, the broad axe, right? Exactly. The broad axe was used to square up the log and make a timber out of it. We've got a great stack of barn siding here. We've even got some uh, uh, floor planks. What do we do next? 
Well, the next thing we need to do is clean the wood, and the best way to do that is power washing it. Tell me about these floor joists. Well, typically in a dairy barn, uh, most of the floor joists were whitewashed with the lime wash, and uh, they can be removed if done properly, and we'll show you in a minute. We've got Anthony here with us to show us the proper way how to power wash. And the first piece uh, we just spoke about was this whitewash piece. And the proper technique to remove that whitewash is to bring the wand a little closer and apply a little more direct pressure to the piece. The next piece is the timber frame shorter piece and that has mostly grime and dirt on it. An optional next step is an insecticide treatment and one product that's uh, used in the industry is borate sprayed on the wood and let it soak in and this basically takes care of any type of insect that would be living in the wood. Well, Bob, thanks for showing us around today. We sure learned a lot, but I know you got to get back to work, so I'll let you get going. Thanks. Really everything. enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Some people call this rediscovered wood, and that's what we're talking about. We're taking something old and making it new. People make bookcases out of this. They use it for flooring. They use it for architectural details. We've done something special with the wood from this yard. We're building a table, and you'll be able to see that table in the plans on ProgressiveFarmer.com under projects you can do.